Hi, my name's Ian Fursa with VP Toolkit. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Vive Mars Fizz Tracker with Unreal Engine and the VP Toolkit plugin. The first thing you're going to do is mount your fish tracker on the camera body. You're most likely going to use 15 millimeter rods on the bottom or on the side of the camera. Make sure the lens encoder has a solid contact to the gears of the lens. After you're done doing that, you're gonna connect the USB from the fish tracker to your Vive Mars Rover by connecting it into the top left USB jack on the Rover itself. Once you've plugged in the encoder to the Vive Mars Rover, you're actually going to get a little indicator that shows that you have lens data coming in on your cam track unit. Now that we've got that set up, we're gonna move into Unreal Engine. If you've never used the VP Toolkit plugin before, we recommend that you go back and watch our general setup videos if this is the first time using the plugin. So we're assuming that you already have the plugin set up and you already have tracking set up with the VP Toolkit plugin. Once that's running, we're going to go into the lens data menu of the Frustum widget of the VP Toolkit plugin. First, we're going to enable lens data, and then we're going to select the rover that we want to use to get our lens data from. We currently have ours on Rover 3. So once you've selected a rover, you want to check the direct input and do a quick lens rack to confirm that you're receiving data. Once you confirm that the data is coming in, now we have to do a zero reset. So you're going to want to set the lens all the way back to its close focus and then hold and press the zero out button, which is the bottom button that's circled in blue on the side of the lens encoder. Once you've zeroed out the Vive Fizz Tracker, we're going to set A and B points to our lens to be able to map the whole distance of the lens within one area of the input value. So we're just going to enable AB mapping and then go to the very beginning of your lens. We're going to set the A and then go to the farthest distance of your lens. Once you're there, hit the B and it will set the in and the output. Now that we've mapped our A and our B, we're going to set up a lens map. So if you don't know how to build a lens map, we're going to link a video in the description that we've posted of building a lens map for the VP Toolkit plugin. Once you've gone through this video for each of your lenses, you'll be able to have access to them from this dropdown. So once we've enabled the lens map curve, we're going to select our lens map. Right now we're using the GL Optics Canon FD 50 millimeter. So now that we've set our lens curve, we wanna just make sure that some of our camera settings are matching our physical camera. So what you're seeing now is the standard method of setting up depth of field or focal distance with Unreal Engine on these types of stages. This is a one-to-one -one from the virtual camera to the physical camera. That means if my physical camera is at three meters, then my virtual camera is also at three meters. The issue with this setup is it actually doesn't emulate the real characteristics of a lens if it was shooting into a world like this. By setting the camera one-to-one -one with the virtual and physical camera, you get a layering effect, which causes the background to look a little too out of focus, or what a director of photography might say, it's too blurry. With the standard lens data, it destroys the natural characteristics of the bokeh, seen here circled in blue. By incorrectly rendering the depth of field, it also makes the background light almost completely disappear because the virtual environment just has too much depth of field on it. You can see that here in yellow. Since we've run into this issue, the VP Toolkit plugin has what's called the in-camera VFX depth of field solver. Then we compare it to the VP Toolkit Depth of Field Focus Solver, where the real production camera's cinema lens is doing most of the work and the virtual depth of field more accurately falls off into the environment. You can see here that the one-to-one -one lens data, or no depth of field, when focused on the focus chart and girl, the objects in the foreground, circled in blue, are too out of focus compared to the real foreground objects circled in red.
We have multiple different modes for this. We have a lens data mode, which we're going to be setting up today. And we also have an auto mode. So let's enable the auto mode and just kind of forget that we had already set up our lens because we're going to use that data later. We'll do that by enabling the ICVFX depth of field solver. You'll see a little indicator pop up on your menu that lives there even if you have the lens data menu closed. This takes your camera settings and the wall distance and creates a depth of field that looks more realistic for in-camera VFX. This mode can actually be used without any lens data, so this is what we recommend to use on any shoot, whether or not you have lens data or not. So now all we have to do is enable the lens data in the in-camera VFX solver. You can see a little gear icon popped up to our ICVFX DOF icon here. And then also our focal distance has a little green gear icon next to it. That means that it's currently working and it's on. When using this system, you wanna make sure that your camera settings are accurate. We are currently on an Alexa Mini that is shooting in 16.9, 4.3K with a 50 millimeter. We want to make sure that those settings are correct in our virtual camera, matching our physical camera, as well as the T-stop. And you want to take a look at your focal distance here and there just to make sure that they are rendering one-to-one -one before they hit the in-camera VFX depth of field solver. Something that we commonly hear on set is the production or the cinematographer wanting more or less depth of field in their background image. We've solved that by creating a depth of field multi. This utilizes our solver system, but then adds more depth of field to it or removes some of the depth of field creating a sharper image. Let's try a couple different settings with that. So I'm going to set it to 0.5. And you can see that the background image went more out of focus. If you wanna leave the system on, but almost completely remove any out of focus elements, I recommend setting it to two. This will put most of the background in focus, but still with a little bit of depth of field fall off in your far background. The other aspect of the depth of field solver is the ability to focus in your environment, actually focusing and being able to rack from real elements to virtual elements in your scene. We have a few user settings for this. You have the ability to create pre-screen curves and post-screen curves. That means that if you wanna play with how your focus transitions from real to virtual, or how your focus reacts once it's in the virtual world. You can also change the screen range. We default have it set to 100, but you can play with this to find what works with your setup. The screen range is the distance that your physical camera will have the LED wall in focus. And then we have pre-screen begin. Pre-screen begin is the distance from the LED wall that you want the virtual depth of field to kick in. We usually leave this at 30, but you can play with different settings to see what you like. So once you've set up your lens data, you wanna make sure that you save that as a camera marker. I'm gonna name this camera setup, lens data just to make sure, and then hit add. So now we have a reference to how our camera was set up. So if we ever have to reload this configuration after changes, we can always go back to our default settings. Again, my name's Ian Fursa with VP Toolkit, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>